Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the moons of Mars. And yes, indeed, Mars has two moons, but not in the typical sense. Sure enough, there are two objects that are going around Mars at regular intervals, but they weren't formed initially when the planet Mars was formed. Well, it turns out that none of the terrestrial planets at one point had moons, not even Earth. Earth's moon came about through a giant collision between Earth and some other very large object that pushed off a piece of the Earth that eventually then reformed into a moon that began to revolve around the Earth. Mars also did not have moons, but somehow, since Mars is closer to the asteroid belt than the Earth is, it managed to capture two of the asteroids, and turns out that those two asteroids then became permanent satellites, permanent moons of Mars. They're relatively small, we'll talk more about the details. There's two of them, and they're called Phobos and Demos. And here we have two pictures of them. Phobos is the larger of the two, Demos is the smaller of the two. Now Phobos has a lot more crater markings than Demos does. Demos has a, a smoother surface, so not sure why that is, but presumably since Phobos is a bigger uh, asteroid, there's more gravitational force, perhaps, uh, but at those speeds, I don't know if that would have made any difference or not. So, Phobos being the larger one is actually really close to the surface of Mars, only 3,700 miles above the surface, which is about 6,000 kilometers, which is really close. So, if you were on the surface of Phobos looking at Mars, Mars would look giantly big to you, it would be very, very large. It only takes 11 hours and 6 minutes to orbit. So, as Mars is going around orbit, you can see that Phobos would just zip around at very high speeds. And that causes it to actually move in the opposite direction than Earth's moon relative to the Earth. It is spiraling inward. It tur turns out that about 1.8 meters per century, meaning that every century, Phobos is 1.8 meters closer to Mars than the century before. And of course, over the millions and millions of years, that will add up. And they estimate that in about 50 million years, Phobos will either have crashed into Mars or will have broken up because of the gravitational forces and the tidal forces between Mars and Phobos. Both of the moons have what we call synchronized rotation. In other words, the speed at which the moon rotates on its axis is exactly the same as the speed at which, I shouldn't say speed, I should say the time, the period. The time that it takes for the moon to rotate on its axis once is exactly the same as the time it takes for the moon to go around the planet Mars. So the same face of each of the two moons is always facing Mars. So just like on the Earth, you'd only see one side of the moon and not the other side of the moon, which is kind of interesting. Demas is a smaller moon. It's, it goes around Mars at a much higher level, about 23,460 kilometers above the surface of Mars, and therefore it takes a lot longer. It takes 11 hours and 6 minutes for Demas, uh, for Phobos to go around Mars, and it takes 30 hours for Demas to go around Mars, which is longer than a Mars day. So that means that Demas will stay in the sky uh, not very long, because the Mars day is about 24 and a half hours. It takes 30 hours for uh, Demos to zip around, so it'll zip around, but because Mars is moving quite fast and Demos is moving a little bit slower, Demos will stay in the sky for a very long time. As opposed to Phobos, since it goes so fast, Phobos will zip through the sky in only about four or five hours, and then it'll disappear over the horizon. So, as mentioned, both have synchronized rotation. Now, on the next video, we'll show a lot more of the details, and we'll compare one moon to the other to get more of a feel for it. But again, they're not real moons, just like Io and Europa on, on Jupiter. These are captured asteroids, and of course, some of the other planets have captured many asteroids as well, including, including Jupiter. But yeah, they're not real moons in the sense that they were formed during the formation of the solar system. In other words, terrestrial planets, at least in our solar system, did not appear to have formed their own moons, as opposed to the giant gas planets do have some of their own moons along with captured asteroids as well. So let's go to our next video then and let's look at some of the details about each moon so we can compare them to one another. How many other planets, uh, how many other moons on the host planets do, this, do that where they, where only one, you only see one side of the moon? Well, I know our moon does it, Phobos and Demas does it. 
I'm not sure if Jupiter has managed to do that to its moons. I have to look that up. I can't remember. Honestly. Yeah, a lot of moons, though. Jupiter has a lot of it. It has over 60, I think over 80 moons by now. I mean, it just keeps going. Because they keep finding more and more moons. Uh, I'd have to look. I am not sure at this point. I can definitively say. I would assume because of the strong gravitational force that Jupiter managed to do the same to its moons. I know that uh, since um, Saturn's moon is uh, very far away, at least the large moon is very far away, it probably did not get a chance to do that, but I believe the Jupiter moons are probably synchronized as well. But again, I'd have to go check. I don't know at this point. I know Pluto is no longer fine now. What about Pluto and Chiron? Um, I thought they were synchronized as far as I know. Yes, I think they're synchronized. Again, I can't remember off the top of my head. I have to go look again. They're, um, yes, Sharon is a very big moon and uh, I think that it's synchronized with Pluto.